Um, so I have been given the honor of introducing Barry. Barry's going to be teaching a class here in the winter, starting in January. He's teaching a class Thursday morning called Nature as Source. So um, I've known Barry for a long time, that's why I get to introduce him. He's a spectacular painter. Let me just read you a little bit about him. Barry was born in Regina and has resided in Victoria since 1982. Barry taught at the University of Victoria, University of Saskatchewan, and Mount Allison University. Barry has exhibited throughout Canada and the United States. His work can be found in collections such as the Canada Council Art Bank, Prudential Insurance Company of America, New Orleans Museum of Art, and Can West. He is currently represented by the Bouguera Matheson Gallery in Edmonton and the Wallace Gallery in Calgary. So, now, um, I just want to take uh, just a minute, and I don't, because I don't think Barry would read you this quote, but it is his own quote, so I thought I would read it to you. It's, it's really quite beautiful. Barry finds inspiration from walks in his urban environment. It is here, this is the quote, it is here that I get random images, juxtapositions, oddities, repetition, those things we take for granted. It seems that nature in this urban environment reveals itself slowly in bits, in pieces, fragments, something here and something there. This random juxtaposition of nature and urban has become an endless source of invention to be recalled and to be painted. The paintings are visual compost layers that stall thought, trying to reconcile one item with another. So, uh, knowing Barry's painting and, and, and knowing him, I just thought that I would add, you know, we're all trying to be respectful and thoughtful and caring about our environment. And I thought about Barry's painting. He is such a thoughtful and caring and respectful painter. So, I'd like to introduce Barry. Thank you. Shout out questions while you're talking. Okay, okay, so <laughs> just shout them out because he won't be able to see you, and uh, then he'll be able to respond to those. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Welcome. I'm going to start off with uh, my name, and then give you some background information before we get into some visual information. Uh, as a painter, uh, which I've been to be doing for quite some time, one of the things that I like to do is work in series. But I also okay. like to work with a number of paintings at the same time. Along with that idea, I also like to work with other projects at the same time. So that's an example, like the two or three series going on with four or five different paintings at the same time. That's how I work, and that's who I am. Well, if it works for me, I like that idea. I'm not sure if it's a valid point for other people. Uh, one of the things, uh, generally speaking, adding to the, uh, the comments, uh, my work for the last little while is what I've done is I've sort of like, I dance around the idea that we use nature to decorate our urban environment. So that's sort of the general premise. I think those are the kinds of things you'll see as I start showing you some images. The things I'm also interested in are things that are subtle. I like things that are very ingenuous. The things that drives me. I like things that aren't that can't be taken for granted or can actually show other ways of seeing other items. I think when you start seeing some of my work, some of those things might start making some sense to what I said. Uh, I'm going to start off showing you some drawings. Uh, a lot of people I'm not sure know that my beginning of my practice, I spent a number of years just doing drawings. And I pulled those drawings out more or less just to give you a sense. And you'll see a connection as we move on through the work. So let's begin. Let's start looking at some work. Now again, you've heard what Zane said. If you have any questions, if I'm speaking too softly, if you think you would like me to repeat something or go back to the image, that's what we're here for. This is an opportunity for you to have see what I do as an artist. Uh, I'm not going to talk that much about these drawings. Uh, they're graphite and paper. They're roughly 40 inches by 40 inches. And I think you'll, as I throw some of these images at you, uh, maybe I'll start making some sense. I'll turn off the light. One of the things I've done in, in this presentation is I try to take that white retina burning thing you get when you see images after one, and I sort of gray those things out uh, so we don't get too much of a sort of a, I don't know, get our eyes burnt out in watching images. 
There is the white line there. Is that the white paper showing through, or is that white added well, on now? That's just a bad cropping. But okay. the, uh, <laughs> well, but within the work, within the work, those white lines within the work. Yes, that's the, actually that's white. That's white of the paper. Okay. Wow. Thirty-eight by fifty-ish. Uh, again, graphite and paper. Uh, subtle. I do want to go through these things a little quickly, so I apologize for that. But I just want you to have some images in the back of your mind, so when we start talking about the paintings I've been working on the last little while, maybe they'll make some sense. Uh, I like a lot of stuff around when I'm working. I like to feed off the work that I have. I like the idea of building a series and, and letting other works help build that series. Again, 40 by 40. It's a series called Hints and Allegations. Okay, graphite and paper. The process of, uh, of these drawings is what I do is I take a sheet of paper and I just basically blacken it out as much as I possibly can until I get tired. And then through erasers and masking tape, I begin to pull images out of it. A little bit smaller, 20 by 19-ish. Uh, 
woodworkers. Uh, this, this is acrylic on canvas, and what this is is just sort of a, a just position of, of, of a visual image of nature with a real element of wood or a real element of nature. So there's basically a sheet of plywood at the bottom, uh, and there's a picture or image of, of nature. Again, uh, acrylic uh, on canvas and then uh, with a, a piece of wood attached. So Barry, do you do drawings beforehand or do you just paint? Directly? I just paint. Yeah. Uh, but uh, like I said before, in terms of series, uh, I, I'll have a lot going on. And so other works will feed other works. And uh, as I get into when I move, I'll, I'll, bring, I'll come back to the question and talk about why I went into oils because it's for the same reasons, I think. And again, acrylic on, uh, so what we just saw before was uh, taking an image of nature, putting, it, putting it, uh, it on canvas, and then sticking a piece of wood beside it. And what I started doing was changing that up a bit. So what I have is the same kind of visual images I was interested in, but putting the piece of wood behind there. And when I was, when I was working this way, the piece of wood that was behind there, what looked to me was basically it's growth rings you know, it's in a subtle way. Mm -hmm. uh, I also started using only using wood that I could find in construction sites that I could that was basically recycled. What's interesting, we have some students who are in the sculpture class, and to see how painting can overlap with sculpture and how painting becomes like a sculptural object, oh, yeah. especially well, when you start seeing the side views. Yeah, well, these, uh, this particular one right here is six six inches by eight inches. Uh, it's quite small, but I'll give you a shot of what that looks like. Yeah, I, I, would, I really wasn't concerned that much about it being manicured. So the pieces of wood, there's sheets of uh, three quarter inch ply, just nailed together to give me a, a sort of a, a body that would stick out of the wall and the image of painting on the outside. Uh, this is a series, uh, I follow that, uh, I call it the Boulevard series. And I'll, I'll sort of go through these. Various thicknesses, uh, a lot of uh, opportunity to, to play with them, of how you want to display them, whether individual pieces, could they be stacked, uh, the relationship between each work. You talk about ambiguity. Um, the ambiguity is also in the material because these read as drawings, even though you've used paint, and they're sculptural as well. So you've got that cross reference to different media. I can look at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really great observation. You can see all three at the same time. Moved on to uh, a similar sort of idea. Uh, another series uh, which is called Property Lines. These are 30 by 32. This is where I began to start working with oil and acrylic paint. Uh, and in most cases, the oil paint was the image of nature. Uh, and what I started doing is taking that branch image I was working on and had to work on and putting it into a ridiculous sort of situation. So this is sort of like just much you call it uh, it's, it's sort of a decorative element uh, of it. Uh, I've got three I'll show you. I think you'll first see what I mean by that. So during the branch is painted in oil, but black is the color, yeah. the gold, the yellow. Yeah, the, the, the ground is, is, is still acrylic paint. And it's quite formal. I think that's sort of an important part of my work. And I think these things, well, some of the earlier drawings I showed you, I like that play of, uh, in which you can have the opportunity to take something that's representational and use that representational space, but also play with it in terms of abstract space. And uh, this is uh, an example of that. Then 30 by 32-ish on, on just some plywood. And really what I'm using is acrylic paint is to give me, to, to secure the ground. Are these all found pieces of wood then, Barry? Uh, at this stage, probably not. No. I started a, this is a series called Standard Shaping. Uh, this particular image is 15 inches by 18 inches, and I won't say much until we get to 
further down into some of it. So here's an example of one of the panels, another panel. And I think this will probably make a little more sense when I show you this image. What I did is I took a sheet of plywood, I cut it into these sort of shapes, and then I kept sort of roughly a square in the middle, and I just chiseled back so I had this have this relief of what the wood looked like. And then there would be an image uh, in painted on that black with the center surface. So I started, as an example, this would be what a groupie would look like. Are there particular woods that you prefer to use? Uh, affordability. <laughs> <laughs> in some cases, uh, you'll see as I move forward, uh, uh, I w anything sort of, that goes to that uh, idea of, uh, of it being generic or it being uh, common, like this is all standard sheeting, this is just building material, it's, um, it's nothing special, it doesn't carry uh, the prestige of a finished surface that you might find in mahogany or you might find in some other paneling. Do you have your favorite sources where you like to get your plywood, etc., etc., when you're working on the bigger pieces like this? Uh, not well. I, whoever's got the least expensive <laughs> time, you know, and sale at the time could okay. be that. Okay. And what what I end up doing with uh, is built taking these sh these panels and putting them back together into the shape of a, another regular eight by eight, four by eight sheet of, of, of plywood. So this is sort of a exhibition I had. Uh, I'll show you another shot of it. <coughs> and what was quite wonderful for myself was that uh, these, these smaller pieces, there was no real reason of how they were put together. It was just whatever. You know, they didn't, there was any juxtaposition was fine. Uh, it, it just allowed the work to a lot more freedom. Along with that show, there was uh, these paintings, which are uh, square, they're 48 by 48. Uh, and they stick out a little bit, they're an inch and a half, so there's, they're, they're quite heavy and, and uh, quite, uh, quite thick in terms of uh, their surfaces. There would have been approximately maybe 20-ish of this size plus those panels. Two separate panels just pushed together very. No, it's yeah. one, one panel. One. Uh, they're uh, 24 by 46 ish. Mm -hmm. A series called Mimicry. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, it was a play of my skills. Uh, what I would do is position an image in one part of this sort of basically a diptych sort of format, but still mm -hmm. within, with, within one, one, one structure, and see if I could duplicate it. So there's this really great um, combination of this um, really beautiful, almost botanical drawing or, or painting inside and then this kind of industrial black surface almost. So mm -hmm. that's the real power of the piece when you see these like this. Mm -hmm. Just isolated in that black. It's, it's very, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. I move now into all oil. As a finished surface, might be a better way to explain it. Mm -hmm. Still relying on binding agent for the, for the plywood. So it would cover an area for, with acrylic mm -hmm. paint yeah. as a surface so that I could paint on top of it. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to paint directly with the oil onto the plywood. Is that right? So they at, at, this time, at this time, no, I didn't want to, but down the road I have. It's a bit larger, 17 by 60. So, Barry, this relates to my question about drawing. Um, so I, I hope it doesn't sound repetitive, but when you approach your paintings, do you have any plan, or you just like do you, do you have an idea of like that you're going to make a, a shape? Well, in this particular series, which is mimicry, was what, what it was <coughs> that I would put this image and then try and find it another spot within it and try and paint it exactly the same. This is actually the case is a bit of a mirror one. Right. So you would think, well, I'm going to go to my studio and make a painting of an apple. 
I, sometimes. <laughs> I was trying to get a little bit, uh, get you to talk a little bit about your process, because it's, okay. it's always interesting, right, how an artist works, because in a way you're doing a couple of things. You're introducing objects into your work, but you're also really responding to the surface you're working on. Yeah. So that it's interesting those two things are going on at the same time. I, I agree, but it, it's also, um, what also drives that is my, is my background education. It's coming from, from an abstract background and, and having mm -hmm. a, a need or a sense in myself of how important just those raw materials are outside the image side, outside, outside the representational image side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I like marrying those things together. <coughs> I think for myself they make a lot of sense. And, and I, as we, we talk more, we get into the newer work, that's what I'm trying to bring about how odd it is out there in that world. Is that when you when you walk in outside and you see nature in, in its glory, and all of a sudden there's a, something odd that someone's built, uh, how do you how do you bring that to the world to, in, in a visual painting? Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to marry that, use allowing abstract to be a part of that. It's a series of paintings called Pitch. Uh, and pitch is in terms of sap of a tree, as an example, and they're quite uh, glossy. And, and this is just sort of the beginning where I started allowing the wood to become a more uh, important part of the, uh, the, the painted surface I, I paint on become more important in the image. So now I'm allowing the wood to be, as an example, this is all just wood by itself. Uh, and it might have some stain on it. Uh, but I'm also beginning now to uh, take uh, torches and burn images into the surface along the same time trying to burn stuff. Uh, one of the things, uh, in terms of I talk about subtleties, uh, I, like to, I like the idea of shadows. Uh, I use a lot of that as an image. I don't see an uh, example that bird image as being, uh, I see it as being a shadow of a bird. And what drives, what draws me to that is, is that it's, it's a shadow falls onto a surface, and that's a flat surface. Mm -hmm. And again, that's that abstract uh, thing that I enjoy, and it comes from my background as, as a very painter. Because the apples look that way as well. They don't look three-dimensional. They look like they're a painted model surface, but they don't look volumetric. Yeah, they, they, they can be just stuck on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm trying to do in, in this, showing you my work, is I've taken the series and I've sort of grabbing two or three paintings from each series and sort of just giving you a sense what that it's about. Uh, this series is a little bit smaller, 24 by 24 inches, and uh, they're, they're named after streets I once lived on. That's sort of the driving thing. And again, a lot more uh, play of, um, of, uh, of using attacking the wood surface, not too aggressively, but allowing things to happen. Maybe be staining it, or maybe burning. Like this, these images here uh, are burnt into the wood surface, as an example. Uh, the burnt image I like to use is, is, is your generic house fair. Like something you take for granted, but it's always there. So I sort of play with that. What drives your composition? What drives my composition? <laughs> uh, well, there's always the formal aspect to it. Uh, first of all, it's the square is something I, I like to use a lot, and that's there. I also like to play with things on the edge of, of, of the work. The other thing that is a part of the composition is that I want to be able to when you have something representational, it wants to find it, it wants to find what we normally like to see in representational space, foreground, background, etc. I like to play with that. I like to sort of, I like to set that situation up and then alter it somehow, and alter it in, in terms of allowing the formal aspect of the painting to be there. So, an example, this black edge around there, which really strikes, which really sort of stops a too illusionary space to happen. Any space you're most likely getting is a figure ground space, which I for me, is, it has a sense of abstraction to it. And in this painting, the the black birds are completely flat. Yes. The drawings in the apple, and then you have 
uh, like the illusion of three dimensions with the burn house. I don't know if it's in one point perspective, is it? Or asymmetric, one or the other. Oops, sorry. Should I be asking these questions, should I? But I noticed that some of them are slightly asymmetric. Yes. Yeah. Which is kind of a way that you illustrate a blueprint. Like that, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. It makes it flatter. Empty. I'm just throwing this uh, small group in here called Property Line. And it's just, uh, it is what it is. Uh, not too large, 36 by 32. Again, these are inches. Uh, I've never really moved into the metric world. Uh, but this will drive the next series. Uh, and just to maybe go back to something that Wendy was mentioning. When I'm working on, when I'm doing these, I'm also, I'm also doing these. So it's, it's, they feed off each other. And then they suggest other things where I might want to go. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll, there'll be an opportunity to uh, show the work in, in a different situation and uh, I'll drive another body of work. Uh, these are kind of small, they're 8 by 8 by 5 inches. Uh, and uh, there, again, there, there are a series, I'll walk through a few of them so you get a sense of what they look like. And if you think of the little squares I did before, uh, this particular group is I, I manicured the edges that became a little more important to me and they're sort of been polished up and, and uh, varnished, etc. And uh, they stick out of the wall and it gets to five inches they stick out. But uh, again, it builds into it. Uh, I like the idea. Perfect. Release the birds. <laughs> series about DB 12 or 14 paintings, uh, titled after uh, Heritage Chapel. And I'll talk a little bit at length, of, I won't talk at length, I'll give you some information about uh, this. Uh, most of this, this series had a grid in it, and I look at the grid as being a token, it's, 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 it's infinity, it keeps on going on and on and on, which is like a sense of promise to me. Uh, the bowl is like the Hornet Plenty, it's like the basket full of fruit, it's, it's, again, it's, it offers all these things to us about promising us, uh, I don't know, happiness. And this is also painted on, on, uh, on uh, what is called a mahogany door cast. And uh, that reference to me is really close to Rumpus Room. So, so that's how it ties into this promise. Uh, utopian world of what formalism was offering, what the grid was offering, what the Horner Plenty was offering us, and then we're sitting in our basements in our rumpus rooms. <laughs> so that's sort of the driver. When you Sorry, go ahead. Can I just make a comment? Which is Absolutely. that I don't see a grid. What I see is, um, I mean, obviously there's a grid, but what I see is that makes me think of fabric because it makes me think of a checked fabric. Oh, yeah. okay. And a lot of your images make me think of, or, and a lot of your design work makes me think of fabric. And I was just wondering whether that ever comes into your head at all, <laughs> or that's just my personal obsession, so I'm seeing it in your work. Well, um, I've, I've had to shop for fabric. <laughs> 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 and I don't know, uh, in the early days with chintzes, uh, you could live in that upstairs and yeah. just, oh, yeah. you know, drool over the things. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, that, you know, that maybe... 
I wouldn't shy away from that. Yeah. Because it, it introduces a notion of the domestic. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, and, and your work is, I know a lot of it is to do with um, being outside, but it's outside in a neighborhood. And mm -hmm. so there's that sort of, all the way in the back of my head, there's been this notion of the domestic, like the sparrows that you see in the hedge outside yeah. your window or whatever. And so then the, the designs which make, remind me of fabric reinforce that notion of the domestic. Yeah, like that one. <laughs> or kitchen tile. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, it's, I think it's, for, for a, a person who makes paintings, an uh, opportunity to hear what people see in the work that's made is, is equally important. That's the dialogue. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's really important. Yeah. So, I, now I'm going to show you some images that I... And I, I don't store these images. I go out and find them when I'm going to maybe do a talk or I know something's going to be happening or I've, we've been traveling and I took a picture or something that might remind me of this. And I'll give you a sense of where I'm heading. Uh, and uh, these are just photographs. I just picked them up together so I can show you more. Uh, and, and one of the things uh, on the, the colored leaf on the far uh, right, it makes up looking this way, is, is that I'm just amazed of how difficult it would be to make a, a painting like that. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's such a challenge to see those kinds of, you know, you, you think of the Gearheart Richard, which we've been talking about. It, it's, it seems to me it's just amazing, and, and that's, that's just a big driver. Uh, I mentioned to you in terms of uh, shadows, and the, the stuff on the left-hand side that came across a leaf that was fairly transparent and still had a shadow on it. So it just sort of has that duality to it. And it just strikes me as being interesting. Um, anything odd that's a plant I enjoy. Uh, and uh, you know, the kind of illustrations I, 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 has been a driver in my work for quite some time. Uh, and, and mainly for one reason. It's completely out of context. I mean, if you can recall what a botanical illustration looks like, here you've got something in flower and seed, and it's ripped out of the soil, you can see its roots, and there's maybe plants and other bugs around it. It's that image is completely out of context to reality. Uh, and I, I like that play of things. Uh, shadows. Uh, I, again, I'm... That's such a great photo to show that you're talking about the shadows in the paintings, the silhouettes like that. <coughs> Not really exciting photo, but yeah, that's a shadow. <coughs> I haven't started uh, digesting these next four photos I'm going to show you, but uh, I, I walk. Uh, Recently, walking a lot, a lot at Mount Doug, and there's a couple of trees that are down. And what right now I'm showing you <coughs> is just the violence of it. I'm trying to see how I can get that, or if that's just going to sit outside the world for a while before I start considering how I'm going to get into painting. But it's quite the. You know, we have this pastoral sense of nature, but it's very, very violent. Uh, these things have always made me interested. Uh, the vinyl wraps around substations. Uh, what drove me to this particular one is here you got an image of a, a tree and you've got lumber and then you also have a fence. You also have another tree, a living tree, uh, all stacked up in a small sense of space. These power stations are uh, little houses, I think. I'm not sure one more. A series of paintings called Making of Dirt. Uh, and, and really, uh, this is probably where I, in the last one, much more playful. Really, it's a compost of ideas, a compost of processes, and processes in terms of layering a paint or layering how you layer an image. May it be uh, a wash, or maybe thick and pastel paint. 
Barry, what's your studio practice like? Do you uh, paint every day? I, I paint every day. I think it's important. I put it this way, I think it's important that you're in the studio every day. Uh, a lot of times, uh, studio work uh, is, is about work. It's about maybe uh, making preparation, maybe building something. Uh, but if you're around your work, I think it helps feed back and forth. So uh, I find uh, that most of my days is work days. I still like painting at night. I find that's where I can be make, make more be more creative in my decisions. Uh, I I don't know why, but I, and I might be driven out of not not having time during the day to paint. But uh, yeah, it's, that's that's what my days are normally like. What I also want to say about these the making of dirt, what I started doing is, is uh, buying wood panels, and if you ever get a, a three-quarter inch, or three inch, an eighth-inch uh, uh, doorstop uh, paneling, you look at the back of it, it's usually the back is, is quite, uh, it's not finished. So I started using that as, as the surface of paint. So these sort of things here, that's, that's actually the wood paneling. That's what it looks like in the back of uh, what, what a good sheet of paneling would look like. Cool. Also started using a, a paint stripper. So I would paint something and then put paint stripper on it and just pull out. Like this is all gorged right back into the wood. And it's just using a regular paint stripper to pull out an image. It's trying to be a little more physical with the uh, surfaces themselves. There's, there's a, a series of work called uh, the, the Walker series, uh, which is, uh, I don't have any images, but I'll talk about it briefly if I can. Uh, they're, they're quite dark, uh, and they, I, I painted them mostly during the winter time, and what I would do is, when I, after my walk, anything I saw I would put into a painting. Because I'm working on maybe whatever numbers, there would be just positions of them. I might have an idea here that I saw, but put it in one painting. Two days later, they may show up in another painting. It just played around with that. Uh, I'm getting close to the end, for those of you who are... This is a series of paintings called Yard Square, which I had the opportunity, and I again thank Wendy for inviting me and having an opportunity to show it in this space. That's such a scientific looking shape, that resin, Mary. Yeah. What is it? Well, there's, there's, there's a couple things going on. I don't know if I have all in here, but uh, one of the things I like is when you put two kind of ovals together, they'll fight about <coughs> the space. Uh -huh. So that, that's what that part's about, or part of it's about. But it's also about a blend of abstract and representational space. Mm -hmm. It's something, and that's, and I, the entire work is a square format. Uh, and again, uh, this is uh, this is 12 by 12 inches, and, and, and it's on a regular panel you can buy at Opus or the other uh, art stores in town. Mm -hmm. But what I've done is I found other pieces of wood and, and glued those on top of that. Mm -hmm. So I've, basically I've got a structure, and then I put something else on top of that. Not in all cases, but in some cases. Ten by ten inches, they're small. So that's sorry. Is that painted directly onto the wood? Yes. Well, the, this is the wood box. The black? The, the black's paint right in the wood. Maybe, maybe you can see there's some bubbling there. Yeah. Well this surface here it has that bubbling on it. That's just the imperfection of, 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 of the, the sheet that I added on top of it. But I also like the odd things that can happen. On the far right hand side of that image, you've got these little knots and how they are just supposed along this edge of the black. I like those things. Sometimes they happen accidentally. Twenty-four inches by twenty-four inches. Do you ever consciously, like, I mean, when I look at those two, this one and the last one, I think of mural and um, clay. Okay. Do you do you ever consci do do you ever consciously refer to them, or is it just something? 
No, I don't okay. consciously refer to them. Uh, <laughs> no, but like, but, you know. but I'm, I'm also, uh, I can be easily influenced. I know that when I've traveled and, and seen tons of work, I have to be careful when I come back to the studio. Uh, but uh, one of the, to give you some historical background to my context, uh, Kandinsky is early with a big influence for me. Yeah. Ross Blechner, uh, another influence earlier. Uh, but, you know, what, if I was to talk about influences, what drives me or excites me is when I walk into a room and I see it, and I don't really care who made the work, you, you immediately are drawn to it, and you can see it, and you can understand it, and it moves you in some sense. Th those are the important pieces, and, and there's just so many of them. It's, it's, it's huge. And how big is this piece, Barry? 24 by 24. Okay, so that little leaf is, is basically life size, right? Because isn't there always a life size element? Pretty close, course? yeah. And then it kind of gives us a reference to, because that other invention, we have no idea what it is. So yeah. At least we know the scale of it, because right. it's beside that piece. Right. That's a representational space. Like if yeah. you have, like, have this sort of thing that looks like a branch, mm -hmm. and then also I paint a car beside it, well, yeah. you know that's a tree then. Right. right. Yeah. So this is the play of that. And also, oddly enough, a lot of my paintings are painted with brushes like from like three down. Okay. They paint really, really small brushes. And, uh, yeah, so there's this real uh, a contrast, and this beautiful detailed work, and this real kind of rough um, kind of crazy space that that's in. I mean, that's, that's a really interesting space right. that those objects are painted in. It's so flat and wonderful. So this is uh, a series I'm working on, and I still work on it, and it's called Beautiful House, House Beautiful. The 11 by 14 by 2 there, I'm just on the panel. Well, interesting, because you showed us those black uh, shapes in your, your very first slides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you asked us to think about those, and there they are again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there, there are a number of things. Like they're certainly uh, domestic, or yeah. they can be footprints, uh, yeah. uh, architectural footprints. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they can be just formal. It can be like a, a box, or it can be a, a, a hard edge shape. Look like you've actually made them. You've actually printed with a leaf to mm -hmm. make them. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not to say it, that would be that. <laughs> but the wash is some, 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 some like this red one is just basically a, a red wash. And what I bring, bring back, uh, I went to oil paint a bit so that I could not rush in making decisions. And I also went to using. A, more series or more work within series so I don't have to make rush myself into making decisions. Mm -hmm. So it slows me down, but being somewhat still a busy person, having more canvases to work on keeps me active. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other thing about oil paint on panel is that you can wash it off quickly. Oh. I'm not committed, so I'm, I'm a non-committed committed artist. <laughs> Another project I'm working on currently, along with Hell's Beautiful, Beautiful House, is 
the Lucretius Gardner project. Uh, it's taking me some time. Uh, I'm going to show you some images. I don't see my work being metaphor. I see it being analogous. I see it's trying to, rather than using images to suggest something else, I'm trying to create an image, create a painting that somehow captures that. The essence isn't the right word, but it's trying to capture that what I see up there. Mm -hmm. Like a simile. Yeah, in a way. Rather yeah. than a metaphor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think metaphor takes you out of the work. Mm -hmm. I, want, I want people to be at the work mm -hmm. rather than be in front of it. A studio shot, uh, this, I'll just show you some quick ones. Um, these are not done. Uh, these are 60 by 60 inches, these two square ones here. I'll show you a little closer to them. But they're getting uh, quite busy. It's interesting. When, when my work gets really busy, I start listening to jazz. <laughs> when my work gets really simplified, I start listening to country music. <laughs> so one, I'm looking for a, for a narrative, and then one, I'm trying to get away from the narrative, which is just, just sharing. Do you ever just put on the music to set the mood for the painting first? No. It's just, it's just, uh, we listen to, um, my kids are here, they'll know our house is always has the music on. Anything on, anything. We listen to everybody if we can. I just find myself, when, I, when it's time to calm down, I prefer listening to jazz sometimes and other times. Still a little bit of close up of what's going on. <laughs> This painting is extremely busy at the moment. Looks like a lot of number three brush in this one. Yes. <laughs> it's on my Christmas list for three paintings. <laughs> Joanne? Yeah. <laughs> Recognize your voice. Okay, we'll save the space for you, Joanne. <laughs> and, you know, if, if, if you're shy, don't be. Uh, and the school has my email address. You can always send me an email if you have a question. I'm, uh, I'm just a normal person who paints. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the outline of the bird you did was fairly similar from one bird to another. I wonder if you used a stencil to give you the outside shape before you did the I, I will sometimes, especially when I was burning the images in. Right. Because uh, I would create a template on another sheet of plywood or another sheet. And I would do that. Uh, but yeah, I'll use a template. Mm -hmm. Barry, on that last uh, painting, the very large one, do you rotate it so that you're able to paint at different angles? Or are you really good at painting upside down? No, <laughs> 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 what, what I'll do is not so much good at painting upside down. What it is is that after being in the ground that long, it's hard to get up, right? So I'll, ro I'll rotate it so that I can paint uh, to, to reach it. Uh, but in a lot of cases, I, I prefer not to, uh, only because I want to keep it in the context of what I'm working on. So I turned this painting upside down to, to move it, and it was just so odd of what it looked like. Uh, it's so different. So you never paint them on top of a table. You're always painting them standing. Yes. Okay. Or kneeling. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I know people are always really interested in, in, in seeing your studio, seeing the studio space. Yeah. That's a really interesting thing, seeing an artist working in your studio. It's, it's, it's a great studio. It's, it's, it's super small. And yeah. almost all the work I showed you, other than some of the drawings have been produced in the studio space. It's just a basement garage. Okay, it wasn't that first white studio, though. Was that a different studio? Yeah, it was a different studio. Other okay. than the drawings, yeah. Do you still use burning as part of your work? Like, 
I, I haven't had a need to do it, okay. but it, it wouldn't, if I have to, I would. Yeah, it's just using a, a, a bullet torch that you would use for plumbing. Oh, okay. Yeah, nothing, you know, nothing dangerous or too dangerous. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 I don't know if this is a question, but just so where my mind goes sometimes. I, I like finding relationships in disparate things as well. I look at your work and I think of Islamic work, I think of Japanese work, yeah. and I think of Australian Aboriginal work. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what's the ground? And all of them have this sense of being still and being observant of nature and the landscape. And, yes, I, and I don't think you've been looking at those things, I just think that that sort of thing comes through when you pay attention to nature. That's a good point. I am what I am, right? Uh, or I don't know what I don't know is another thing. And somebody mentioned about composition. And I don't plan a composition. I don't, and I don't look for balance. What I will on occasion is try to, if I notice that's heading that way, I think that, that, that is, that's going to cause a problem in what I'm trying to achieve. Then I'll use composition as a device. I mean, as an example, maybe throw something on. Uh, I'll usually maybe try to break the composition more so than try to push the composition. The Australian Aboriginal, uh, I'm not going to say much more, but the Australian Aboriginals reduce, um, reduce their familiar beings in their landscape, in their life, to symbol, to similar as what you do with the, the circles and the shape of the birds and stuff, there's consistent shapes and rhythms and patterns. So, yeah. That's nice, I'll look. Yeah, a lot of that stuff is I've seen the shadows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never really thought about that. You take a three-dimensional object and you, the shadow is two-dimensional on a flat surface. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really come across in the world. So, thanks for pointing that out. I think even the printmakers are really, I mean, this is so much like printmaking and painting and drawing and sculpture. They're covering everything. Well, uh, background, uh, when I did my undergraduate work uh, in Regina, okay. it was, we were required to do everything. And, and when I graduated, you had to show proficiency in all, all the subjects. So uh, you had to show printmaking, clay work, sculpture, painting, drawing. It was, it was, a, it was a very diverse program. And uh, it wasn't at the time, there was a lot of abstract work going on, but it was still skill driven. You know, we had light drawings, we spent our time learning all the things that you might need down the road. Who knows what, you, what skills or things you have to do down the road. So awesome. Yes? You mentioned that you've done a lot of traveling and you've seen a lot of work, but you're being careful when you come back, when you go to work yeah. <laughs> on your own stuff. Of, is that you're afraid of repeating something you've seen, or do you... I don't want to be influenced that way. You know, it's, it's just, I'm going to change your question to so I can sure. have my answer. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Most people have to do that with me. Yeah. No, it's fine. <laughs> but I'll tell you where I, what I When I see other people's work, what it really drives me is it makes me more competitive. Uh -huh. uh, I, I, I want, I say, that's great, that's fantastic. How do I get there? Mm. You know, if, 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 if something this size can move somebody, I, I want I want that arena. I, I want to have that opportunity to do that if I can. So it's a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. And for that to happen, you have to be within yourself. You have to be. You have to know who you are and what your work's about. Mm -hmm. So then, the other stuff you see out there, although it's beautiful and, and may, you might say, "Oh, I wish I could you know, do that." What I'm taking back to the studio is the drive to do it. Exactly. And, 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 uh, again, you know, <coughs> the part of that when I was in, when I did my undergraduate. Faculty members had their studios right in the building. And uh, you, you'd be working at night, uh, you're going home tired at 9 o'clock, and you get ready to go, and you go, oh, they're still painting. <coughs> What's that about, you know? Yeah. But it's, it's about the commitment, you learn about commitment, you learn about the excitement of that, you learn about putting the hours in. So I think I answered your question. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well thanks again Barry and Thank um you.